Okay, so, um, finally found a really good vampire book, which well, I was surprised, and it's called, uh, Immortal Awakening, and, um, I really, really, really liked it. Very corny, very corny. Um, it's not like what you've read before. Um, for once, it's college romance, the teenage romance, which usually don't like to talk about because it's like, ugh, another teenage one. But, um, yeah. Huh. <laughs> and it was a very clever one. A clever book. Very clever book because, um, alright, so it starts without our main character, Gregory, an immortal vampire who's bored and doesn't know what to do with his life. I think he's, I think he's 300, but I think he might be older than that, probably 5. But I kind of forgot and didn't care. He's old. He's old. He's tired. He's broody. He's not surprised anymore. So what does he do? He goes back to college. Um, and so he didn't think anything of it. And there he meets Nikki. And Nikki's not like any other human you ever met. Nope. She, I want to say she feels people's energy. I don't want to say psychic. I don't want to say telepathic. She just feels like emotion of people. And she felt him by accident on probably the first day they met. And he it surprised them. And she knew his feelings so well. So, um, she, she, she actually wanted to be honest with him. And he's like, what do you feel about me? And she's like, you feel like Shakespearean. Are you sure you want me to be honest? Because I am brutally honest. He says, I can take it. So she says, okay. From you, I get an immense loneliness, worse than that I've ever seen. Like you've been alone, literally forever. And boredom, a bigger than I've ever seen. In fact, most of what I've get from you is stronger and deeper than anything I ever felt. She paused for a moment, still watching me. It's like you've been feeling this way for a very long time. She paused again. It would take most people hundreds of years to this mere empathy and sadness. Her eyes are, were burning with compassion and pity. It was as if she could see right the death of my black soul. She smiled at me sadly at me. And I can tell you were not always this way. My mask finally cracked and I blinked at her. What? Once upon a time you were happy. Mirful even. I can see that too, which is why I am so persistent on trying to help you. As I... Oh, that is so sweet and beautiful. And for once... Um, what I like about this story is, um, basically through it, there is sexual tension, but, um, there's no sex, actual sex. There's biting, just for, uh, health reasons and survival reasons, but, um, she gets them Shakespearean, and it's, like, very beautiful, but at the same time, yeah, he is dangerous. But because she respects him, not caring that she he has to survive on killing people, I didn't like that part. I thought maybe animals or you know donating you don't have to kill someone to get blood, but um yeah, it's real it's realistic too um these two these two made such a great parent um. I cried a little, because, um, he did ask questions on, like, what will happen in 40 or 50 years from now. I can't keep her forever. This is nice right now. The moment is beautiful. But what about tomorrow and the next day? And, um, she kept on, she kept on sending him, uh, little quotes from Shakespeare. Shakespeare, and I have ex I have a ex ex Shakespeare quote for you, but is it for you? By all means, let's hear it. 
To sleep, for hence to dream. Ay, there's the rub. In, for in that sleep of death, what dreams may come. To discover the country puzzles the will. And makes us rather bear those ill we'll have. Than fly to others that we know of not. The coincidence uh, does not make coward of us all. You condensed it to make you feel better. Yes, you did. Like, they get it so well. And she was guessing what she was for a while. And, um, <laughs> she works at a bookstore, so she kept taking out books from <laughs> a, uh, bookshelves and putting it flat on the table for him to look at. Like, she knows what I am, doesn't she? But, does she? <laughs> she brings out the book, Frankenstein. She brings out the book, Men from Mars. <laughs> she jokes about it, and, um, he ends up telling her, yeah, he's a vampire, and she's like, okay. What's it like? And she knows it's lonely, but she, she gets it from, from, um, and uh, he, he actually admits that rather quickly that he's in love with her, but he won't act up on that love because of his nature. His real nature. So, um, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it at all for you, but this is a really true, deeply sweet book. But, um, what sucks about this book is it's the only one. This author wrote this book about five years ago. She hasn't wrote another book since and I was really hoping to go for to see what Nikki and, and Greg's story was going to be. Because it's pretty dangerous too. But luckily Gregory's friends are actually really nice so they don't want to kill her but they there are others that want to kill her just for curiosity. Anyway. Yeah. You guys will love it. I loved it. I cried. I laughed. I went oh. I went, ooh, I went, ah, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a good book. Read it.